There. Delicious. And we are live on episode 105 of On Tap with Southside Collection. <laughs> I've got my boy Carlos here. You stupid idiot. <laughs> Who bets on the Rams? Take your hat off, dummy. <sighs> that was yeah. terrible. I'm almost, hey, I almost finished it. I feel it. I'm proud of you, bro. Get back Ooh, at it. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and introduce the show real quick. <laughs> We uh, with us we have Josh Samples from Green Flash Brewery and Doc Loke of Doc Loke and the Swangers. Correct. I'm, that's right. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure because you told us your real name earlier, and I was like, I don't want to put him out there like that. That's your, that's your personal <laughs> info. The people that already know that, that's cool. Cecil. Yeah. <laughs> well, Cecil Shorts the second. third. You're right. Yeah, that was terrible. And man. with me as always is Carlos Diaz, the world's most notoriously bad Super Bowl better. <laughs> I won last year. Yeah, you lost this year and the year before. So that means I'm going to win next year. That's so, not how it wait works. Wait a minute. Well, I don't know. Before, because so you didn't bet on the Patriots at all? Nope. Anytime. So here's the thing. <laughs> we both, uh, when we started this podcast, you know, the, Fal- the first one was the Falcons and, and, the, and the Patriots. Right. We both wanted the Falcons. True. Nobody wants Patriots to win. I get it. I get it. <laughs> so it wasn't even that as much as it was the Falcons uh, to... To quote Will Ferrell, I mean, they were so hot. I mean, yeah, yeah. Julio Jones hadn't scored, you know, all all that year or whatever. But so then, the second year, I got to pick because I lost, and I picked the Eagles. Okay. I like yo. You, know, you have a thing for birds. birds. No. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. So there, so now I it's let, out there. Now okay. I, so then I let him pick, <laughs> and he picked the Patriots, and he was right. Smart man. So that just means that we picked the Super Bowl winners around here. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I like that how you make yeah, that nice. work for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, right. So next year, whoever I'm picking, bet on. That's all I'm saying. Okay. You're due. Nah, dude. So and what you're hearing right now is the grossest. Oh, sound that was disgusting. Of a man chugging a 25 ounce Budweiser and Clamato. Um, I think it would be Chilada. Yeah, Chilada. And I have to remind everyone, it is the only one with Clamato. Because that's something to be proud of. Officially licensed. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yuck. Yeah. yeah sounds... So, yeah. I, that, uh, the six-pack of silence, which will be thrown at me, you know, at a date to be determined. And then I can't wear my hat. Lusciousness. Man. <laughs> right? For those yeah, of you yeah. only listening to the show, Ugh. it looks gross. It looks <laughs> better than Garrett's hair. I, I didn't realize you. that was what was under that hat. Garrett's hair grows like a Monchichi. Like, it's just, yeah, so he's envious of how my hair grows. And that's luscious, just what it is. Luscious yeah. Locks. Well, yeah, dude, I have newscaster hair. Yeah. You have fucking <laughs> kingpin hair. I don't I feel like, like you it. cut those, that you lose your power, kind of like, you know, Samson or something, right? <laughs> that's the point, yeah. <laughs> that's you gotta let it grow, you know? A little bit, man. I don't think I've gotten a haircut in about a year now. So, I can't you know, do that, it, you know? hey. I'm also trying my beard is trying to grow up to be like your beard. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a lot of a lot of practice. Yeah, yeah. Water a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is Are you right? the most disgusting thing I've ever done. It could have been four with loco. a beard. Can you you wanna, pour you me up some real beard? Yeah. You know, he <laughs> when I mentioned that I considered doing four loco, he rev, like he was happy about that. Yeah. He's like, Oh dude, I would have chugged that. Like, yeah, cause I, I knew you would like it. I can't just let you have it. What why would Yeah. Don't ever do that. I did I like like earlier. Kanye said, bro, I'm a sick fuck. I would have chugged that four logo, no problem. You wouldn't have seen me once about it. That would have hurt so bad. Oh, yeah. I later. played Power Hour with it. Yeah. Like, that was just little shots at <laughs> one time, and that just was rough. So. Uh, for those at home that don't know what Power Hour is, can you so, explain it? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Power Hour is when you take a shot of a beverage of your choice. You can do it with wine, don't recommend it, or four logo, don't recommend it, or but typically beer every minute for an hour. So you time it, so you start it, you know. <laughs> Four o'clock, and you go to five, but you take a shot every hour, so, every minute. There's also, and how I, we used to play it, and we did it with wine and stuff. Uh, is yeah, it's rough too. Is they have like playlists on YouTube, and the song changes every minute. Mm-hmm. So you could pick like a '90s playlist, and it'll change every minute and stuff like that. That was always a good way to do it. I like, I liked, I liked it with the music. It's way more interactive and less depressing than just yeah, like, sitting there, with sitting a shot there waiting for the time yeah, to yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fair yeah. Enough. And so you I, don't have to remember a couple hours into the game. You're, that's true. Yeah. That's that's helpful because that is the key. Like you get 10, 15 minutes in it, and you're just like, what? And it feels like it comes every second that you're like taking a shot, and you just forget, and like you're four behind. Next thing you check, and you're like, shit, man, now I gotta go. Oh, God, now I have, to, I have to catch up to everybody. Yeah. Why am I friends with these people? Oh yeah, yeah. that was the word. Yeah, when you go to but the bathroom. Drink responsibly, kids. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Drink responsibly. I had at a, home. No. I had at a home, home, yeah, because yeah. that's five an hour, right? Yeah. Five, twelve hours. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Yeah. 
The uh, I had a I had a friend. I gotta do something over here. Yeah. <laughs> I had a friend who, who had a Quick roommate, maths. and she loved. She would hit me. Hey, you want to you want to power out? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, I mean that's what it, that's how it did for my yeah. roommates when we lived uh, downtown before I became a married man. I'd be like, we're gonna watch Star Wars, and you know what? Well, let's play Power Hour. Let's yeah. watch this and do that. I mean. You know, <laughs> save you money in the long run. I guess it's your like one or two beers instead of going out and spending seventy five dollars. Right. So. True. You get equally as housed. Way faster. Again, drink responsibly. Of course. Yeah. This yeah. Show's about. Ugh. God, I still <laughs> taste that fucking clamato. <laughs> mm. Doc Loke, what is the worst, even alcohol or non alcoholic drink you've ever had, that you could remember? See, I went right to my favorites. Um, <laughs> right. I, I don't. I don't. Um, I like them because they're and, bad. And it, it's it's been a minute, so I'm um, I'm trying to think of uh, uh, I, the pull, pulling a, a a can of beer and there being a cigarette in it. Oh, you know, that, nice, that's dude. a nice cocktail. Hell yeah! Oh. I hope my, <laughs> the two a.m. cocktail, dude. Yeah, hi grandma. <laughs> <laughs> hi Doc's grandma. She's probably watching there. You know, yeah, she's, she's an avid Facebooker. I didn't, okay. I didn't. I didn't know what to expect, so there's no warning. So. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I didn't know. Sorry, to... Doc's grandma. No, oh, yeah, sorry. no five second delay. <laughs> <laughs> We're 105 episodes in, so my mom gave up a while ago, <laughs> and she did learn what to expect. My mom has no idea what we do on Thursdays. <laughs> She, she, knows, she probably thinks me and you are gay because we hung out hey, 105 consecutive, yeah, 105 we consecutive Thursdays, care. yeah. <laughs> that or she just doesn't think I exist. Yeah, no, she's seen you. <laughs> Met you once. Yeah, that one. Josh, time. congratulations, man! The Patriots uh, won the Super Bowl. You know, let's just get it out the way. They did. Uh, I mean. So, you know, you know something that doesn't get tiring is winning. <laughs> and I, as a Pats fan, man, I uh, I get it from everybody else. Yeah. And so I get it. Nobody wanted him to win. I understand. Six rings for the greatest quarterback of all time. Tom right. Brady and the greatest coach. No Ariana Grande, though. Yeah, that's no. Seven rings, man. I know, but that's, that's going to be the theme Catch song next year, so, I mean, it's okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Speaking of Ariana Grande, I heard today that Davidson is with uh, Kate Beckinsale now. Dude, he gave her an what ovarian cyst. Or he burst her ovarian cyst. Oh, and what? <laughs> with yeah. A baby arm? What's, that's yeah, what's, oh, that's okay. the rumor. <laughs> Dog, who did you have winning in the Super Bowl? <laughs> sorry. Um, we're transitioning. No, I'm, I'm taking this off of Facebook. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm, ki- I'm kidding. I, okay. I'm, sort of, I'm sort of, actually, I'm considering it. Um, <laughs> no, um, uh, I, was, I was going... Um, I'm trying to remember who else was playing. Uh, the Rams. Yeah, it was the you, Ram- you couldn't tell Rams. by watching going, the game, but the Rams were there and no, they were I, playing. I, actually, I was I, I was going for the Rams because I don't like the Patriots. I just yeah. I just don't. Sure. So That's you know, cheat to huge, win is you know, a philosophy yeah. for some people, and I, I, I get it. You know, it's, oh, it's uh, just, whatever it takes. Yeah, whatever it takes. You know, so good. A little thing to figure out for next year for your bet. Yeah. If Alabama wins the national championship, and yeah, the Patriots that. have to be in the Super Bowl. Don't pick them because yeah. they will lose. Right. But if Alabama doesn't win the national championship and the Patriots are in, then right. you better pick the Patriots because it's the last seven or eight years running. It's been they've alternated years yeah. on who wins. So everybody equally hates Alabama as much as they hate the Patriots. So right. I guess it works. There is. <laughs> there's a hatred for Alabama but I will there's something that they're more revered like people still are like damn Alabama is well it's still harder I think it's bad. harder to do you know you got like a, sure. a new team every couple of That's years true. you yeah. know no, I give you like that. literally from top to bottom I give you that yeah I mean it's still the same thing like somebody was talking about Joe Montana today and how he's the greatest and I'm like yeah but you know the NFL free agency didn't start till 1994 and uh, you know, salary cap wasn't until 1993. Like these are all things that Brady and the modern era guys have to deal with. Like right. Montana got to have Jerry Rice on his whole, you know, his whole career. Like, oh, yeah. cool, you get to throw to Hall of Fame receiver your whole career. It makes it pretty easy to win yeah. four Super Bowls. Uh, but yeah, no, it is what it is. It's uh, great. We did we number six, and number six, we uh, you can guess where we put the other finger, uh, <laughs> ring on the finger. But uh, yeah. it's kind of cool. It's uh, they're going around and uh, kind of doing a little swan song. Like, you know, they you know, they believe in this chip in their shoulder thing, and like they were uh, out calling out Max Kellerman today on <laughs> on TV, and I kind of respect that. Like for yeah. years, like people have trash talked the Patriots, and you know for whatever reason. But I mean, at the end of the day. They actually acknowledge that they're hearing that stuff, and right. athletes don't always try to acknowledge that they're hearing what social media is saying. And right. they're like, "Look, we hear all you guys, and they're they're blowing it back into you." One of my favorite well, tweets was that uh, I think I told you this last night. Duan, Duran Harmon was like, "You guys mad or you big mad?" And everybody's yeah. like, "Oh, they're mad, mad." And like, <laughs> and it's true. People are people are rarely angry that they yeah. won, and yeah. they're calling us the most boring Super Bowl ever. Which I disagree. I think it was exciting if you like football. Yeah. I thought it was a good game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it was, was fun. high scoring. I mean, this is the biggest. This was the season in the NFL. They scored the most touchdowns ever, right. and then the Super Bowl culminates in a thirteen to three win. Like, yeah. with defense, I thought it was right. exciting. Like, yeah, it wasn't you know Mahomes, and, but yeah. it was yeah, it was just kind of ironic, but. 
Uh, I thought it was exciting. It's it, good to hear you that. It, you know? it definitely was. Like, if you're a casual football fan, then yeah, you, I can see like there's yeah. room for considering it boring. But if you right. like football, I'm you a saw... casual sports fan. Yeah. Period. Except yeah. for the Rockets. I was going to say, do you have a favorite? I, yeah, that's why my mouth is mostly shut. You know, <laughs> I, we don't. Yeah, we don't mean to shut you out with that. No, no, no. It's we cool. cover mostly. I'm, I'm anything. learning things. You know? Yeah. 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 But I mean, that's cool. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm glad everybody was excited about it. Yeah, I've learned to respect the right, Patriots and their yeah. fans. <laughs> now, what about the halftime? Yeah, so there was a lot of controversy. I didn't really watch that, so I host a huge party because I'm the president of the fan club here. But uh, I didn't watch it, but I did read a bunch of stuff on Twitter about it. Right. And there's some really harsh memes on Adam Levine, like taking oh, the shirt nice. off. Like they they roasted him. They yeah. didn't get him as bad as they got Demi Lovato, but we'll, we'll touch on that later. That's true. That's true. But they roasted we won't him. We'll touch on it. Pretty, pretty bad. But I mean, I, I don't know. I thought I was, for what I glanced at, I thought I was okay. Um, you know. It was very, um, and this isn't meant to be beyond what it is, but it was just very vanilla. Yeah. yeah. Like, like I said it last night where I'm like, the the Maroon 5, I imagine, put on a good show if you go to see Maroon if 5. You, right, if you go for that. Yeah, like, thing. if you go to a Maroon 5 concert <laughs> at Toyota Center or whatever, I bet She Will Be Love fucking gets girls sliding yeah, out of the, those. I will say, though, the fact that they open chairs. with like, the, She Will Be yeah. like, well, come on, y'all. You gotta slide into She Will Be Love. Start yeah. with, like, Moves with Jack or something. See, I don't even know the names of the songs, <laughs> and when people say, I now know Adam Lambert, right? I didn't uh, know Levine, Adam, Levine. or, see, that's... Adam exactly. Lambert, more accentuate, oh. and uh, he's <laughs> probably more fun. Now. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. He's the new that, Freddie Mercury. Yeah. Um, See, but I've got. I think Adam Levine, as a musician, is super talented. Like I heard him on Howard Stern. Like, and he he can play the guitar. And like, yeah. I think he's super talented. He's got but some good falsetto. Yeah. yeah. But I think somebody. I think it was Dee Snider tweeted out like NFL. You play all these rock songs, all these metal songs in between breaks. Like, when are you going to play to your audience? Like, why are you playing Maroon Five? You know, right. you play you play rap and stuff like that too. Like, in hip hop, why aren't you playing putting these guys? Obviously, there's controversy with safe. that. But I mean, well, right. But it's like. Yeah, so Maroon 5 is, is cookie cutter safe. You know, ever since Janet Jackson, it's been, like, really weird on who they've selected. Right, right. Um, and I think, you know, you play all this all this music in the stadium, why not play Metallica at halftime or, yeah. or whatever, Travis Scott, you know, whatever. The you amount know. of times they right. come back from break and Mo Bamba was yeah. playing it had to oh. be some record-setting number. At every NFL game I watched yeah. this year, or not at, but, like, during every NFL game I watched, while they're still taking the field again from the timeout, it's I got oh. Well, the Patriots played it in the locker room. They had one of those big, huge boom boxes. Bum boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they were just they were playing. It was it was pretty lit. But uh, yeah, I mean that guy's making some money now. I mean. Oh yeah. Just all it takes is one, right? Yeah. Doug, you said right. you, you watched the full uh, halftime performance. I did. So from a musical standpoint, you said he had good falsetto. Was there? I, did it stand I, I couldn't out stand, stand it. I, I could I couldn't stand it. I thought once Travis Scott came on, that was that was something that I was interested. I just recently discovered his music. I knew I knew that he was repping Houston really hard with Astro World. Yeah. And um, that uh, I saw him give give homage to bringing the old school uh, rappers and, right. and giving them a gig. Yeah. Um. So I, I appreciated that. And then when Big Boy came out in that Cadillac, I was like, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes, give me more of that. The, one part uh, that I did like uh, with uh, Maroon Five was when they played together. Right. That was okay, yeah. that was nice that that uh, that Travis Scott was playing with a real band. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, yeah wasn't yeah. it like because they kind of separated separated in increments, right? Like yeah. the Big Boy did his thing, Travis Scott did. Like I do like when they combine them all because I think we even talked about this the other day. Is that it's kind of cool to go to a show and not hear it with backup tracks, even with live musicians. Right. Like, there's yeah. there's something to be said that that is. A whole different experience. Mm-hmm. I've seen some rap backs do that, and it's like it's so cool to see them do that with a live band. We were talking right. about it because I told him who his or who the other guest of the show was, <laughs> and how Carlos had described you, and so uh, he was saying how much he respects. I was like, yeah, dude, I want to see more of that. Yeah, and so, yeah, yeah. agree. It's just it's expensive, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, pay sure. pay musicians, and it's you know they, they don't even use real drummers anymore. You yeah, know? Really? It's, it's, it, I mean, you hear the. You know, and I I don't listen. I don't like to be old man like get off my lawn and stuff. But the way hip hop is going right now, it's like it's uh, with the mumble rap and and yeah. the tracks are just so boring and um, it just it just makes me sad for well my daughter's twenty and she loves that stuff. You yeah. Know? But I'm just glad uh, like if y'all remember Boom ninety two. Mm-hmm. Um, I we would play that every, I play that every morning taking her to move from uh, Houston to Pasadena and driving yeah. and, and I would that's part of her education that's cool. you know instead of all this I don't even know who who they all are yeah, yeah. But, but what that's I have point. listened a lot to of them want to sound alike I, they, sorry, they all sound the same man yeah and it's it, nobody has identity kind of yes yeah. in, in this generation I guess and I don't listen to a ton of rap but what I do hear just from the pop 40 or the top, you know, yeah. hip hop songs, I'm looking through a Spotify playlist, it does all sound kind of the same, you yeah. know? And it's like, 
I, you know, I go back to the old school '90s, you know, hip hop, where you know, gangster rap, whatever you want to call it, like that. There's a difference in tone and, and the way they, you know, they did it. And, right. Yeah. There's so. more story. Even, yeah. Even if it's like misogynistic and, and sure. re- really bad and sure. raunchy and stuff, you wouldn't play in front of grandma. Um, you know, uh, and that, I, not to segue back to my thing, but that's something. The <laughs> instrumental versions of, of my songs, I take out the misogyny, I take out the the cussing, I take out all all of that, and cool. I I go to the uh, for me, the most musically important part of the rap is is that I'm sorry is the rap. Mm-hmm. So I take the rhythm of the rap right. and create a melody based upon that rhythm, and then put that over the chord changes of the song. So if you're if you're ahead and you know the song, mm-hmm. you can hear the rap, and the you know mm-hmm. you can hear it. Um, so. I don't know who the audience is for this, but there's. Yeah, there, yeah. I'm looking. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it's a it's a very um, like listening to it. You it just feels new, even though it's it's a thing that it it outlasts rap it, or it came before it in right. terms of a, a band, but then to add it into that effect, it just re- it accentuates certain parts of songs that didn't mean as much back like when you hear it the first time. Right. And then like so when you hear the one with you and Paul Wall. It's just like, it makes it like you're hearing a song you've heard a thousand times, especially growing up in Houston, like it's the first time. Right. So, yeah. Right. And you can add different things to it. You can, like, kind of interpret it different, too, a lot, right? I mean, you can change it up a little bit. And Yeah, I, I add stuff that's not in there. I, I try and keep it pretty, you know, not like a straight cover. I mean, right. of course, it's not a straight cover because right. it's, it's, you know, got a, a Barry saxophone playing the, the yeah. rap, you know, or flute or, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. But, um, you know, they're adding the, the melodic uh, melodic content adds a lot, and then I harmonize that line, yeah. so it, it create it does create something new, um, but yeah, but still that. don't get like far off of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like completely different. People recognize right, that, right? right. I dig that. That's so cool, right. man. Like right. that's there's definitely an audience for that because I, you know, like I said, yeah, that that's more entertaining to me than you yeah. know. I talents worth talent, but that's more entertaining to me to go see live, right? You know, yeah. Yeah. And expect, like like I'm a big fan of like live like mm-hmm. rap music with live instru- instrumentation like it's, yeah. it always will kill always mm-hmm. will kill yeah. when when people go on Fallon like rappers go on Fallon and they right. and they use the roots yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah. they should use the roots like yeah, you got the roots right time. there I hate when they don't right. some rappers don't right yeah. but but you should use the roots every time you get the chance because you're just rapping over those oh. real drums like you said like real drums you you can't like. Yeah. replicate that digitally and those guys are so talented anyways yeah. and, but they do a little bit on Saturday Night Live now too I've seen some acts go on there and uh, and do it with some live instruments and it just it makes right. the whole thing it just it makes them a little more powerful right. you know, to me you know because I mean a dude standing there to a track is not as exciting to me to right. watch to, is versus a whole instrumentation and a whole thing right. going on for sure and you said that that's where you thought Travis Scott benefited with Maroon Five, right? On that that's that show. Yeah, because at first I was like, oh, he's got he's in this big stadium, he's got all these people, and he's got no band, and then like, oh, he's got a band, even though it's Maroon Five, but yeah. <laughs> but they they were rocking. Yeah. I just yeah. I just I, I you know not that I don't like rock, but I just I stopped listening to that in the nineties yeah. when I when I became a jazz musician and started working as a jazz musician. That's what I listen to all the time. Right. The last couple of years, although I, I've been listening to Southside Classics for a long time, I mean, almost the only thing I listen to is is this, uh, d- you know, Dirty South Houston right. rap rap mm-hmm. music, and you know, I'm a college professor. I have to turn my <laughs> I have to turn my subwoofer down when I get you know when I get on campus. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't want you know the students like. Yeah. Well, you want to be known as a cool teacher, but not the cool, cool teacher. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> Once you get tenure, though, it's all good, right? I'm adjunct, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, at what like when did you get into to jazz? Were you into music before you got before you became a jazz musician? I, I grew up in a musical household. My mom sang and played music and, and wrote songs. Okay. Um, so I always, there was always a piano there. When I was 11, I started playing trombone, and all of my uh, private teachers from then on also played jazz so i got introduced to to big band and stuff when you mm-hmm. know in like 87 okay year after i was introduced to the beastie boys nice so hip hip hop and jazz they went hand in hand i listened to both and um you know i didn't have a problem like oh i'm a you know you know how people uh click up in in high school with you know you listen to this music or right. you listen yeah. to this music it's like no i i like uh, most of it you know it's not polka, you know. <laughs> not a polka guy. Not a weird owl I mean, polka guy. It well, was one well, year. When you talk weird owl, that's that's a different thing. That's that's another level. How do you mean? Uh, 
I, I, there's a special place in my heart for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you guys talented. I still oh, see yeah. him doing some stuff. Yeah. But he kind of leads into, I saw a couple, like, uh, I guess what they call nerdcore rap. And I don't know if you've seen those guys, like, NC <laughs> Chris. Nerdcore. Nerd. Yeah, they rap about Star Wars stuff. And I, I saw uh, NC Chris live, like, it's pretty good. Like, Vet's I, Vet, check it out. It's like, actually okay. not a terrible song. It's definitely dorky, but it's, it's not bad. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there's a whole thing, so check it out. I'll say this, and he's better than I could ever be at the job, so... Take me for whatever that's worth. Okay. Uh, if you ever have someone tell you that Mark Riboli or Ribolay yeah. is good, yeah, don't don't, don't believe him. Don't believe him. Don't. The producer, right? No. He's whatever he yeah. is, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was on Howard Stern. Yeah, he's a. I listen to Howard a lot, but he's See, a producer, and like he did the song with uh, Miley, right? Did he? I, did I don't know. Oh, no. You're, I think you might no. be thinking Mark, of Ron, you think Mark, Mark Ronson. Ronson. Okay, which is good. Talented. Yes. So Mark Riboli, I know the name. He's, but, a, he's like you know, a comedy but it's not good, so I don't DJ... EDM DJ. Oh, EDM. Uh, he makes like viral. Yeah, he, he has a lot of viral videos right. where he's like he's he's surrounded by his keyboards and his and his uh, turntables and shit and like the the lyrics are pretty much like let me rub your ass and titties and like it's just that over and over and so okay. like his live it was meant show meant to be funny like, yeah, yeah his live not. his live show is dick jokes and bass drops <sighs> and poop jokes. Hold on, there's poop jokes as well. Oh well, well. I mean, yeah. I mean, I still laugh at fart jokes and poop jokes these That's days. Occasionally, I, mean, it's still funny. I think it's I'm still not gonna pay thirty dollars for it. Yeah, no, not gonna pay, not gonna pay thirty dollars no. for no. it. And then also, it's like, a, like a joke is funny, but then when you drag it along, when you have eighteen different oh. jokes around the same, yeah, it's like a fifteen minute song. It's like Nick Swartz like three used to, to be funny. four right. drops. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it'd be like if. Um, we Dane weren't making Cook. money to be there, we wouldn't have been there. Yeah. It's like if Dane Cook just kept doing, like, EDM music and kept saying the word sandwich. Wait. Sandwich. Oh, he didn't do EDM, did he? Dane, Dane Cook? Cook? No. Thank God. Nah. He was bad enough as it was. No. Nah. Nah, Dane Cook right now is just known for um, dating a yikes young chick. Like, like, oh, like a just 18. Like, a little stranger ting. Good old Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> It's normal there. So then, when did you when did you pick up and, and decide that you were going to make music? Well, I, I knew in high school I wanted to major in music in, in college. I, actually, I wanted to be a professional uh, trombonist, uh, like classical trombonist. It, it was my dream to be in the Houston, uh, not Houston Symphony, uh, Chicago. Okay. So Chicago's you know one of the big, big, biggest, best, and. Um, and then, uh, not not that everybody will get this, but uh, when I had to learn tenor clef, which is like a, a whole different way of reading, you know, it's just it's just a different different thing. I just shut down. I was like, I want to play jazz, and I was already taking. I didn't take piano lessons till I was eighteen. Okay. Um, and I was already taking piano. I really deep down wanted to play trombone. I uh, play. I keep saying trombone. Because I play trombone, but I I, uh, I I really wanted to play jazz, but I didn't understand it. It was like a secret handshake. You know? Yeah. Um, and and it's like that for listeners too. I think, um, you know, at first. So when did it click for you that it was something that you could make or something that you could do? Uh, well, I started working when I was eighteen, yeah. um, doing uh, big band gigs, and back when Astroworld was open, playing playing those Dixieland. You remember with the, the little mm-hmm. hat and the bow tie? I got to do that a number of times. Um, and that, that was real fun, and and then I went to my dark period and stopped working, and right. I kind of went off the grid and mm-hmm. a little time off for bad behavior. And right, did your own thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just working for the state. You know. <laughs> so then, what, what when you got when you got out of that state? Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's when things clicked. I I, yeah. I got um. um I got into the University of Houston actually for the wrong reasons. I was, I, I had a car that needed new transmission. <laughs> and I, I thought if I go to the university, I can get a student loan. Uh. <laughs> and so I did. Yeah. <laughs> and then I kept borrowing money. I got a bachelor's in 08, uh, 10. I got a master's and did you fix the car. Fix I did fix the <laughs> oh, car. Okay. I did fix the car. All right. I still got feel like it was legit because you need trans. You know, you need transportation to get yeah. to the school. Sure. Um, yeah. So I justified it, and one hundred and five thousand dollars later, um, I'm qualified for a lot more jobs. <laughs> right. <laughs> right now, I can I can work part time at a university and teach right. one class, and uh, uh, at that rate, I'll I'll pay back the money in a couple thousand years. There you go. <laughs> Is the, word, is the word restitution that they, they should <laughs> they should pay you for teaching? For like yeah, toys like really take a little bit of thou- a couple thousand dollars off your yeah. loan every every semester. Right, you know, that'd so be nice. What are all the instruments that you can't play? 
Well, piano, trombone, and I sing. Okay. Yeah. So definitely the most musically proficient guest we've ever had on the show. <laughs> and then I saw yeah. on your IG bio that you have skee ball in there as well. I love oh. skee ball. <laughs> yeah, I, I learned how to play skee ball actually um, in New Jersey. Is there a um, trick I, to it? Well, I, that's just it wasn't a yeah. You gotta have you know technique. Yeah, and, and it's bouncing patience. it off the side in the right place. And um, yeah, you know, my uncle Hank had a. a Everybody should have an Uncle Hank, by the way. Yeah. So, so my Uncle Hank had an a ice cream parlor and uh, on, on the boardwalk. Uncle Hank now. Back when the boardwalk wasn't like nasty like it is now. Right. Um, the Jersey Shore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so I learned. I learned down there. Was, so Dave and Buster's just, and stuff hate you because you, you go take all their tickets. Dave and Buster's is so overpriced. I, yeah. I. I, I Unless yeah. I know someone, I'm not going there. What about barcades? You go with the barcades. I mean, obviously, you know, yeah, yeah. when you go to those, because they're not always maintained properly, and so those are the kind uh, of like wonky ones, right? Hmm. No, I, you, you know the only the only bar that I go to to play games is is Poison Girl because of their yeah. pinball selection. Yeah, they okay, nice. yeah, um, they do. Well, you, when you say wonky, like you, or not well maintained, do you mean like? Like you could cheat them, do you think? Or <laughs> yeah, like okay. for like a, sure, like a tilted fucking. Uh... Yeah, like I mean, those are all designed to cheat. They're all half free play now. You can cheat them, but like yeah. you know, there's they're not like obviously they're also you may not get a ball back, and you may start, yeah. like, start with like seven, you may end up with only five, and you're like, well, I guess I can't get a high score. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like the basketball that's how they games, they all come out flat. Yeah, the balls are all flat. <laughs> how these even roll to me? Yeah, it bounces off the backboard. <laughs> yeah. So so then. You so you got into jazz and then you started you started performing in Houston around eighteen. Uh, or yeah, in eighteen, playing like society gigs, tuxedo okay. gigs, mm-hmm. and and then the you know the fancy tuxedo gigs with the hat um, and the banjo and the tuba. <laughs> and then you broke off into your own. Yeah, I, I started working like as a soloist, um, you know, playing like restaurant gigs and uh, getting into weddings and stuff. I'd say. Um, 2000, uh, 2000, well, 2003, actually, before I stopped, um, in my, well, I keep alluding to, you know, I, I, I got clean and sober. Right. Um, yeah, I got in, you. In, in 2003. So I, there was a period where I was, I was, uh, you know, my, of course I'm going to work at a wine bar where I get a, you know, free booze at, that, that, that stopped by the way, you know, there's yeah. still, you know, it's one of the biggest ones in town, um tasting room Mm -hmm. and uh you know uh, that was my first steady gig yeah of of all and and then uh you know getting you know having a band like uh, my first cd uh second cd having a sextet having horns uh which is you know that that wasn't hard enough so i thought i'd move to a (laughs) 15 piece band and see about you know paying them for rehearsal and for for gigs see how many personalities you can manage at once Uh, right (laughs) yeah you leave your class you're like all right guys this has been fun. We've got 15 more people to uh, instruct. Yeah, they already yeah. know what they need to do. It's a matter of getting them to do it. And then if you want to see me downtown, I'll go buy Chocolate Daddy, and I will be, you know, <laughs> playing some music. <laughs> I'll be the gold guy yeah. uh, with the hat in front. Uh, by the way, I, I liked uh, Laura. I love, oh, thanks. I love that track and uh, in your Billy Joel cover. The, uh, oh, yeah. Too. I like what you brought to it. Yeah, I did it a lot different than Billy Joel. Yeah. Did. It's like ten minutes long and goes into free jazz at one point on the sax solo. It's, but it is dope. It yeah. is very dope. Uh, so then, at what point do you become from a solo artist to Doc Loke and the Swing? Is where we're at right now. That's about um, five or six years ago. I, I I came up with this idea, and I think I got it from uh, the pianist Jason Moran. He's a uh, you know, HSPVA grad doing really, I mean, he's, he's something else. And, uh, he came and did a clinic with a, a mini disc player mm. playing Mandarin. He had re- recorded Mandarin at the, uh, uh, airport and he transcribed that. Like he created, it's this similar thing. He, I didn't just like create this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I, you know, I have to give credit to him. He, he, he made songs off of this, this language he didn't even understand. Okay. Um, and then uh, I didn't get the name until about a year ago. My my friend uh, my friend Glenn Ackerman uh, plays bass for me, and um, he said that I'm uh, equal parts street and equal parts <laughs> conservatory. And so Doc Doc you know Doc for the doctorate. Right. Loke that that was a uh, um, a a nickname I had for my friends in the Fifth Ward. So when I got out of prison and stopped selling dope, they said I loked out of the game. Yeah. My name's Henry Henny Loke. Okay. So I dropped the Henry Doc Loke. So. 
And that's the first time I've explained that because I, 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 I don't, you know, I, I know that some of my students like search my name and stuff, yeah. and yeah, and I, I, you know, I'm, I've, I've had some interviews before, but it's like, um, you know, they're not gonna see this one. I don't think. I don't. I don't believe <laughs> so. Name. If they do, if I they apologize do, ahead hey, of time. No, I'm still sorry to your grandmother. And no, they'll clock out when they see me chugging that Clamato. Yeah, <laughs> I wish I yeah. that I guy's not, not having a good time. time. That, sets, yeah. that sets a tone, right? They're like, oh, it's one of those shows. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like he should be wearing a hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His hair's everywhere. Why is he wearing a fucking <laughs> Where hat? Where is this gentleman's hat? <laughs> Ugly bastard. So, so then, wh- when did it occur to you to, to, to take the classics that you like and, and make them more big band style? Yeah. Um, I'd say about five or six years ago, yeah. and I started with the Paul Wall, um, and I told my friend Dan Workman, uh, who's my co-producer, and right. uh, Dan Dan actually knows Paul Wall. That's how, uh, it, you know, the connection. They work on the Grammys and Texas Grammys. Right. And, you know, Paul Wall's involved in the Grammys, and uh, Dan's a, a, you know, he's he's a he's a badass. Yeah. Um, he uh, he's the one. He just recently sold Sugar Hill last year. Okay, nice. Um, so it's that guy. <laughs> And when when Very I told nice him studio. this idea, and we we've been I've probably been friends with Dan for about ten years or or so at the time, and yeah. when I told him this idea, he said, "That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. I'd like to be a part of that." And I, and like that got me through a lot of stuff over the years when I because yeah. this is no small undertaking at all. Right. Um, it took a long time for me to write the first big band chart, um, and then less time to do the draped up, um, the uh, I think it's an octet or a nonet, eight or nine piece. And um, then, then I got a grant last last year from Houston Art Alliance, which is what you know gave me the push, uh, the backing to do right. what we did. You know the recording last year and what we're going to re- release. Do you write next all month. the music for every part? <sighs> everything. Wow, that's cool. There's no improvising right. in 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 Doc Loke and the Swangers. Everything is written. Written down, like even live shows. Like, do you let them? I don't know yet. We have, you know, this is our first yeah. live show. I, 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 I thought of throwing in some treats. You know, tell them right. we're gonna do, we're gonna do eight songs. Um, and uh, uh, there, there's some stuff that I, I've written that I don't have rights for that I thought of maybe just sliding in. Sure. There's a big mode uh, medley that I wrote, nice. and and when I called um, Rec Shop Records, they very quickly shut me down. Um, That's so, unfortunate. So it 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 really is. Um, and how receptive was Paul Wall to the idea? Because I mean, he, they, they re, you know he, he got on the track and, yeah, and laid it down for y'all. Yeah. So we we sent him the the big band version, and and uh, he he told Dan that he'd do it, and it you know it took a couple months or whatever. But then it, it's funny they ran in, the story that I got. They ran into each other at the, in Austin, at the Texas Grammys. Uh, Dan sees that Cadillac just <laughs> fly by him, right? And in the like. In the morning, he got in his inbox, the 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 vocals. Nice. Um, and uh, when when the Houston Chronicle wrote an article for me um, about about the project last summer, Paul Wall was quoted in the article. Like Dan, nice. uh, Andrew Dansby called Paul Wall, and 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 he had like some wonderful things to say. Like he, he was like, I I need to get on this, you know. That's awesome. That's and awesome. and when I, I I saw him at a um, Johnny Dang's one day. And I, I've seen him a couple of times. Girl? I already had it, actually. <laughs> uh, I almost wore it. Um, but again, I don't want my family to know I have a gold Fair girl. Um, <laughs> they yeah. Carlos would have wore his, but he didn't want uh, residual Clamato in it. Yeah, no, <laughs> for sure, for sure. I would have taken it out before I drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, he was he was I mean, I already thought he just he looked seemed like a nice guy. Right. Mm-hmm. But in in person, I mean, he's definitely you know, he's the people champ. That's that's why that's it fits. Yeah. yeah. He, he it's not just real, a name. Yeah. He was real <laughs> real generous, um, you know, being in that article and saying, you know, telling telling the truth and just right. to to read it, you know, it's it's another thing that I, I should probably have it on the wall, like the big <laughs> quote of just, just cut me out, but yeah. to have like what Paul Wall says right. would be like, you're doing the right thing, Henry. You're doing the, you know, keep keep at it. That's all amazing. <laughs> it's like uh, Mac Miller, rest in peace. But yeah, at Mac Miller's house, because Jay Z, I think. It total has like a hundred tweets yeah. in total yeah, ever. Yeah. yeah, and so one of the tweets he kind of just went on a roll of like artists that he thought were good, and one of them was like, it, it mentions a couple other people, but it says Mac and them, 
and he had that tweet no, framed yeah, and hugging like his J- house. J Rock schoolboy, <laughs> while I got yeah. the dot. Mac Miller's dope too. I yeah, there remember, you go. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And he hung that yeah, one up in his house. Yeah, yeah, so, that's like Prince saying you can sing well. Right, 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. So we have a shirt that's called the Trill Supper, right? And we had to pick like thirteen Houston representatives. Yeah, and it's very hard to do. How did you pick those oh, eight songs? Yeah, there we go. That's one of the hardest parts of the thing because yeah. it's like. You know, do I do I pick K Reno? Do I pick stuff right. that people don't? You know, mm-hmm. do I pick the stuff that's 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 chart toppers? And I mean, that's kind of what I went with. But you know, this this is just, I, I mean, in my mind, this is just the first one. Right. Yeah. Um, it would take a long time to cover thoroughly, but you know, uh, I I I really picked the stuff that I knew the best. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and. And I was listening to my playlist because I, I, I think I have like a hundred songs or more on, on my little iTunes playlist that I tried. Mm-hmm. And the order just kept switching and switching. And it's like, it, I, I just, at one point I had to make a decision. It's like, look, I'm going to do this, this, and this. Because I, 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 I didn't write most of the summer. That's when I was going to do all the writing was last summer. Right. And I, I'm a, you know, I'm an old per- procrastinator from, <laughs> from way back. Um, but it, you know, I just had to just had to pick one and pick the next one, and, right. and once I got done, you know, pick the next one. So, do you have a method to get you out of procrastination, or is it so, <laughs> just it happens when it happens? <laughs> actually, uh, I have a I have a mood disorder, which okay. is uh, makes life uh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I have bipolar, and and it usually, you know, when I come out of that, I, I have just tons of creative energy. Right. Know? And and I try and like I tell my therapist I I like to use my superpowers for good right and and uh, that that it helps yeah you know and and what I forget composing for me is an antidepressant okay and it's like it's one of the things in my life that I forget that makes me feel good that right. I don't do to excess like those you know like like food or sex or you know spending mm-hmm. or gambling or whatever there, there's know. those things that are are able to pull you out of that valley or like yeah. That, or whatever that that feeling is at the moment, you're like, right. I know these are some of the things that I do that do help with that feeling. Yeah, and it's, you just forget, and then right. you start it up again, and you're like, I should have done this like two months ago, yeah, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, I can't, I don't fully understand, so I don't want to pretend to. Right. And obviously, I never compose any music, so I can't pretend to do that either. Yeah, <laughs> I can pretend it just yeah. would come out. It sounds hard. Use that big is. pencils. That's big pencils. Okay. Yeah. use big pencils. All right. There you go. <laughs> And so it covers like lines and spaces at the same time. <laughs> it's like spreading your food around to make it look like you eat it. There's a, there's a lot. There's a lot on here. I guess. I it guess good it's job. good. So yeah. so what eight songs did you go with? You got, you got draped up. You got sitting sideways. Okay, I brought this for a reason. I knew I'd forget. Um, so um, oh, and that reminds me of something else I want to tell you, um, which is very very fresh. Um, so there's there's going to be nine. Okay. Um, sitting sideways, the the one that we already released, uh, featuring Paul Wall and Big Pokey. Then on my block, Scarface. Okay. You already know Big Hawk, Twenty Five Lighters, DJ DMD, Draped Up, which which we already mentioned, uh, Swangin' and Bangin' by ESG, Back Back by Lil O, mm-hmm. Want to Be a Baller, Lil Troy, and then end them with a. This hasn't been released yet. Is the Sitting Sideways instrumental version. Nice. So it'll be a nine a collection of nine songs. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And this is a 15 piece, you said? 15. I, actually, um, it's going to be 16. Okay. It, it normally is 15, but my friend in Austin, uh, we were speaking yesterday, uh, Andre Hayward, he's actually a rather famous trombone player in the big band world. He, okay. he He's, he's going to be playing with the Count Basie band soon. He plays with the Ellington band, was nice. with Lincoln Center. I mean, and then a lot of the more uh, modern, I mean, he's... He's a bad dude, and he's gonna play because I realize I can't play piano and trombone at the same time. Not not very. <laughs> I well. tried I, 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 <laughs> you know, in the studio. I played trombone, and then I went back and overdubbed piano. But I, right. I was like, oh, I can't really do that. So, right. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be sixty musicians. Yeah. Nice. Okay. That's cool. Nice. What I was going to say about those tracks, though, I went to the screw shop for the first time. I was, I was just about to ask you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I, I talked to DJ Red. It looks like there's going to be a slowed and chopped version, too. That's awesome. Cool. Do you have like a like a uh, timetable on that or? Well, uh, honestly, I'm still waiting on rights for <laughs> a lot of, for like five more of right. these. So I'm I'm you know fortunately got a really smart good lawyer working on it, and um, 
<laughs> Fingers crossed because it's, it's it's already mastered. Right. So uh, I'd kind of be this has to get out. I'd kind of be crushed, but it's it's gonna be released on St. Patrick's Day, and, right. and okay. that's that's when the concert is mm-hmm. over at the Preston Theater. Preston Theater. One time for yeah. Preston Theater. This is actually a very nice theater. Yeah, it's cool. They do comedy sports there, and um, uh, it, it's a real nice venue. Mm-hmm. Um, I worked on a musical before. That's where we practiced because there were dancers. They got a, like a ballet type room in there. Cool. Yeah. Nice. So what are some of your musical influences? Uh, J.J. Johnson on trombone, Bill Evans on piano, uh, Gil Evans, the, the arranger, um, Miles Davis, I uh, love John Coltrane. I mean, all the all the dead jazz musicians. You know, I <laughs> like, like a lot of the usual suspects. Um, yeah. But I, I wrote my uh, thesis on Bill Evans and his influence on uh, jazz piano. Okay. That's on YouTube, you know. Um, if you've got like 45 minutes and a real interest on, uh, you know, theory yeah. and the octatonic scale and, you know, I, re- I, I know you, you know, you, you, your people are That's, into that. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I like Miles thing Davis. Is, yeah. I, he's, he, to me, he, he was more than just a musician. He was kind of, almost like a comedian in a sense. I have uh, one of his records live at Coconut Creek. Yeah. And he has like a good like five minutes of just stand up. It feels like I've never heard that. <laughs> oh never man, it's that. great. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. He. The cool thing about Miles, he was he was a part of like every right. musical movement from bebop to 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 hip hop. Right. He was always there. You know, a lot of like Bill Evans kind of did the same thing his whole career. And but I mean he got better and did beautiful things. And Coltrane went on this uh, you know a trajectory where he. He went outside and like he went kind of interplanetary, but but Miles was just he he always had a knack for picking uh, picking the new talent. Yeah. Um, and you know, and they they would go on and do big things if you were the Miles mm-hmm. Davis band, pretty much. There you go. Uh, I admittedly do not know enough about jazz. Um, I know I read to it. Yeah. Yeah, kind of blue. Like if that's what I always recommend to my students. Like if you were to start, if you had one album, Miles Davis, kind of blue. It's very accessible. It's not, you know, it's mm-hmm. not real crazy, and it's super chill. Like yeah, good to read too. Okay, nice. Yeah, it's got I, roots in like all these other music. You know, metal to to an extent, and there's like you know, jazz or R and B. Like all there's there's roots in jazz and like a lot of music that I right. that I've read. You know, I don't know enough about it either, but uh, you know, I can see like you know, Zeppelin had roots of of jazz and their and their music too and things like that so it's it kind of kind of goes through all music i would think you know yeah who's that band that's the new greg van fleet greg van fleet the yeah. fake led zeppelin yeah i, I haven't heard oh. any of their music is it, is i call it them like the a, five foot two led zeppelin those yeah, guys are all tiny they're, they're good it does they get a bad rap because they are bad rap because they do sound like zeppelin the guy's got that falsetto voice i mean he's close to robert plant nobody can duplicate that right. they're, they're talented right. their songs are good um, but they're now like trying to separate themselves from that like and people are like no 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 this is the bed you made you gotta you gotta yeah. lie like, <laughs> you, you want to be Zeppelin now now you, now you gotta right. be Zeppelin now you can't be something else you wanna go ah yeah and all their stuff's like all space <laughs> we're gonna call you on it yeah it's all spacey and you know about giant mushrooms and stuff you know that kind of thing that's what's up that's how what's many up. subgenres of jazz are there and how many do you actually consider oh, jazz good grief <laughs> I don't that's, yeah that's a, a lot that's I'm, a tough one um be weirder if you came back to like right when you asked. Yeah, like, oh, dude, there's 56 subgenres, only five of them are real. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I like what some actually a lot of the guys coming out in Houston are doing. Um, uh, like uh, Glasper, Robert Glasper, where, where he's taking hip hop and R and B and and just melding a lot of right. things together, and it's you know def- I, I saw him recently, and he he's such a jokester, and he was telling all these musical jokes. And then he started rapping like he's he's working with Common now. Okay, nice. Like he, he's touring with Common. And I mean that's not. He, yeah, they I have mean, a band together. Been, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And you know, and he's been playing with rappers for a long time. But um, you know that that's that's what I've seen. And um, you know, and I, I try to listen to more stuff than just this rap for my quote homework. Right. You know. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I I, I uh, what James Francis, uh, he I think he. Um, I mean, he recently released an album that's that's amazing, and I don't I don't know I I, I just I'm getting off on a tangent, but the, you know I just think of the 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 idea when when people say jazz is dead, 
you know, and it's like, uh, it's not, not, you know, it's, you know, some, some people's are stuck in tradition and I was for a long time, but I'm obviously not right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of breaking, you know, breaking some new territory. What brought you out of tradition? Oh, well, I got, I've got two CDs that are really good and nobody's bought them. So, you know, part of me looked at this, part of me is calculated. It's like, right. the, these, I'm picking hits that have sold millions and you know, uh, I, I've, got, I've to me, it, it's it's not a lot to, to the big artists. But uh, last year, uh, from from uh, July to December, I got like a thousand spins of the two Paul, uh, of the two Doc Loke songs. Right. And like that's a lot for me because like <laughs> I look at my other CD that's been out ten years <laughs> now. And, it's, and it doesn't have it that way. It's not, it's not, not I don't, It doesn't even register. You can't even... Yeah. You know, Spotify didn't bother sending you the... No, uh, they didn't, no I didn't get it. Yeah, I yeah, saw so you, you, yeah. you, you had the... Like, it was like almost like, like what, that thing? A thousand hours worth of spins, uh, ten countries. Yeah, yeah, it's like big enough to fill some country I'd never heard of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they know how to make a person feel you know, better about... Yeah, not not having a, millions of yeah. spins. Yeah, we all can't be Travis Scott. No, it's just no. what it is. To be fair, no one's listening to Josh's album either. That's right. And <laughs> I was I was in a band once. It's called Scriptundo. Uh, uh, I did we not were, mean to. What I kind of know what kind of music we, did y'all we, play? We were a cover band. Oh, okay. Oh, we were not very good, but you know you get the... oh, total cover. Or was there something? Oh, yeah. y'all were... No, we never. What kind of music did y'all cover? I mean, rock. We covered. Okay. We covered. Uh, I mean, anything from, you know, Smashing Pumpkins. The, to the Beatles, to uh, Marvin Gaye. I mean, we were playing a little bit of everything, you know. What was y'all's free bird like? <laughs> uh, it was uh, probably "Let's Get It On." Uh, we did, nice. or, or that That's or free bird. And some journey. Yeah, we didn't play free bird, but nah. we just because we, we would just keep going on a tangent, mm. and, and then we would have uh, the bartender come in from the place where he'd come in and do like a rap over it. And, like, <laughs> it was it was really terrible college music, but it was you know. It hey, got you by. Got me yeah, by. It was, good, it was a good small time in my life. What did you play? Bass. Okay. Nice. Very poorly. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't pick it up. I it literally started as a. They these guys played instruments. We were, they always came to my bar. And they're like, we should start a band. I'm like, cool. I'll go buy a bass tomorrow and learn to play. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned to play ACDC. And uh, there we go. We're off and running. That's awesome. Right. Play some chords. Right. And um, that's is that pre YouTube tutorials? Uh yeah. It was. I mean, it's pre YouTube tutorials. So I would just picked up tabs and I learned to play off the tabs. Yeah. So I taught myself how to play, you know, some chords on bass. Right. And, you know. <laughs> want to pick up? I got like seven guitars at home that we were that we have now. So one day my son's gonna learn how to play guitar, but he won't be learning from me. So there <laughs> you go. His, uncle, his uncle plays guitar really well, so he'll learn. There from we him. go. What did yeah. you say the name of the band was? Scrotundo. That's what I was afraid yeah, of. A cross between uh, rotund and scrotum. Yeah. Oh, and okay. we had a boom lot in it, and uh, it was great. Yeah, <laughs> and boom, you're you're and booked. Like, uh, you're a, lot booked. Of, a lot of the real bands in Waco were like, you, oh, you guys like make money because you do covers. I'm like, I guess I don't, I don't know. We don't really make any money. We play yeah. our own bar all the time. <laughs> But yeah. So yeah, we book ourselves. Yeah, a lot. We, yeah. I, 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 ran, I ran the bar. I was <laughs> yeah. doing the booking, so I was like, "Well, we're gonna play this day and this day. We're gonna play homecoming weekend." You know, because <laughs> we didn't have to pay us. Yeah, we didn't have to pay us. Now. How long did that last? Oh, like two years. Then we broke up. Okay, and that's they, a, that's a lot longer yeah. than most bands, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever find yourself in like in a medium between between uh, yourself and Doc Loke? Was there any bands that you were in? Oh, I was in a lot of different bands. I was in Los Granales. Um, uh, was a lot of funk groups. Um, okay. I was in a Tejano band that played uh, Tejano music and funk music. They're called TJ Funk. <laughs> so they could play like the traditional uh, uh, Hispanic, uh, like Mexican wedding stuff. Right. You know, playing the Tejano and then play like Tower of Power and, and, you know, average white band, you know, playing, mm-hmm. playing that kind of stuff. Um, for for dancing, that was a lot of fun. I was in, I was in a ska band in ninety ninety seven ninety eight nice. at John Q Public, which nobody knows who they are, and that's okay. It's re- actually I don't really remember much of it, but <laughs> it was fun. I remember that. I remember that whole ska that thing. Ska was huge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> big yeah. Was. yeah. So it was fun. Like ten years later, or more than ten la- years <laughs> later, playing keyboard for uh, Los Carnales. Yeah, because that's I was like a rock star. Well, so. I know I've heard of them, and uh, I got somebody who was you know, play with them. Was, like, a buddy's mine was a drummer with them or something like that. But yeah, uh, but yeah, th- that kind of leads me to like ska was big, and then you had like Cherry Pop and Daddies, who the big band like had a little run. Right. You know, back then it was kind of cool. I even I learned to uh, to dance to that. Swing dance. Yeah, I learned yeah. to swing dance with that okay. back in high school. Yeah. Learned all kinds Cherry of Pop and Daddies. Cherry Pop and Daddies. All right. That's a name drop you didn't expect. I did not. No. Sorry. <laughs> bringing it. Cherry Pop and Daddies sounds like. Uh, 
the group R. Kelly started. Uh, oh. Speaking oh. of name oh. drops. Oh. Uh, oh. Speaking of name drops. Josh, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you to uh, at least let us know what these beers were that have been open so far. Because... All three have almost been ran through. Yeah, we uh, I, once we got past the Clamato, they these do not have Clamato in them. Yeah, I've been. They could if you want. They could. Uh, this actually the first one we had that's not labeled is a beer called Baja Bound. It'll be uh, hitting the market uh, later this next couple months. It's a five point seven percent lager. It's called okay. a Pacific Lager because we're in San Diego, so it's supposed to make you know be easy drinking and uh, light and think about being on a beach somewhere so mm-hmm. it's pretty it's pretty chill i liked it um second it's, one it's pretty good after clamato yeah i mean i would hope most things are <laughs> yeah, yeah, washed yeah, it yeah. down yeah. yeah i mean it would go with, good well with clamato uh the second one is a uh, west coast ipa which most people know what that beer is but this is actually the og version so okay. this is the original recipe seven percent uh five hops the whole thing we four years ago three years ago we went back to a uh, double ipa and we changed the recipe uh to much people's we're not happy about that. So now we're going back to the original with our new branding on it. So it's a little bit more of a shout out to San Diego. Um, so it's uh, definitely piney and resiny and all those things you love about an IPA. And the right. last one is from our other brewery we own called Alpine uh, Beer Company. And it's, this beer is called HFS, which uh, <laughs> stands for, if Texas is asking, hoppy for sure, but it really stands for holy fucking shit. Um, <laughs> Nice. It's a six and a half percent IPA. It won a bronze medal a couple years ago at GABF. Nice. Uh, it's the brewmaster's one of his first uh, recipes on his own, and, and, and mm. as the story goes from right here, uh, somebody smelt the beer one day and goes, "Holy fucking shit!" And that's where the name came from. So, <laughs> so yeah, pretty pretty some easy. Some of them write themselves. Yeah. So these will all be around uh, as we kind of relaunch and rebrand uh, after some. Yeah, so I see the new labels. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, how long did you say? How long ago did you say uh, West Coast was changed into the double IPA? I think it was like three years ago. Twenty. I want to say twenty. 14, 2015. Okay, was it always the same hop bill, or did that change as well? Uh, no, we changed the hop bill. Uh, okay. We went to Citra Hops um, okay. at some point because we had trouble, I think it was getting Amarillo back in the day, so we moved mm-hmm. to Citra Hops, and of course Citra has become one of the prominent hops in the beer mm-hmm. the beer world, um, and now we've gone back to, it's, I mean, pretty much to a tee to the closest recipe we could, because um, yeah. it, it fluctuated from 7% to 7.2, then almost, then we went to double, I mean, at some time it was at 7.9, and yeah whatever but this is what people want this is what people remember this is a lot of uh this started a lot of love affairs with ipa for people right. so this is uh, kind of a and we, we call it og because it was the one that kind of put us on the map or it did put us on the map as a brewery uh we got their one yeah 16 years old so <laughs> bringing it back um no sorry i, I was asking if it, uh, the hot bill changed just because i remember the top or the, the top of the tap handle mm-hmm. uh used to list uh pretty much it was all the c's so yeah, like, yeah, Columbus, Cascade, Centennial, Citra. Um, yeah, I did a little bit. And, I mean, obviously the malt bill changed because you got a, more malt into it to make the ABV higher. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we did change a little bit. We tweaked the recipe when it moved to a double. Uh, we had tweaked, tweaked it before to a Citra hop, and we changed the recipe a little bit, and now it's back to where it was. And uh, still 95 IBU, so it's still, like, it's still pretty hoppy. Uh, yeah. yeah. I shared a really good review that Full Pint did the other day on uh, my Facebook page that just kind of really talking about how surprised they were that this beer was re- reminding them of going back and how it was still dank and like it kind of punches you in the mouth of hops right. a little unbalanced you know because everybody looks for balance now like but it's all about New England IPAs right now about you know juicy and hazy so you almost don't taste the hops and this still I mean if you like hops this is boom it's right there yeah and, but it's still balanced where you can still drink a whole pint and not feel like you got to drink a sip of water right it. yeah I, that's what uh, that it is like you said it started a lot of love affairs with um, with IPAs in general. But the West Coast specifically did that for a lot of people in a, yep. in a large kind of window of time. And so, like, my just starting getting into the craft beer industry like four years ago, it was still West Coast IPAs that introduced you to the idea because they're just – they're almost so aggressively <laughs> – everything you're like, um, yeah. these are the characteristics of an IPA. <clears throat> and yep. so then it kind of allows you – like, if you already are cool with that, you tone down. Sure. And so, but that also you seek those out. Often. Yeah, I mean, West Coast took what the English do with the IPAs and basically just flipped it on its head. As we, you know, typical American stuff, right? Yeah. We we take it and make it way more brash and aggressive, right? Mm-hmm. So that's what we did in the West Coast, and so we put a bunch of hops, we dry hop all of our beers, and 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 I mean, this is not a beginner's IPA by any means. If you are afraid of bitterness, this right. is not something you want to jump into. You'll probably hate it. And I've had many people tell me that when I taste them <laughs> in stores. are like, this is the worst beer ever made. I'm like, thanks. I'll go tell them about it. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, yeah. Let, you know. let, me, let me write that down yeah. real quick. Yeah. Could you say that further from my, my yeah. cam right here? Because I get paid. I get that all the time. They're like, they're like, you know what you guys should do with this beer? I'm like, yeah, hold on. Let me get, let me get a pencil so I can tell the guys who make this professionally what, what we should yeah. do with this beer. Yeah. Like somebody be like, hey, you know what you should have done on that verse? You're like, <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> hold on. Let me write that down. 
uh, yeah. yeah. You're coming out a little ones. flat on that uh, ninth bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, bud. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll take that to heart. Yeah. Uh, but now you mentioned um, it's going to be part of the new rollout. Yeah. Um, that's already kind of going at the moment. Kind of. It's in Texas, its process. Well, in SoCal it is. Yeah, we're in a process here in Texas where we're transitioning packaging to all cans. So these are just sample bottles. Uh, draft is starting to roll through. So we have, like, we'll have some new West Coast coming in. Um, so by mid to, you know... I'd say late, early March, we'll have, should everything transitioned over where it's right. a new portfolio and, you know, there's a lot of the same beers, but, you know, new brand like this is pretty sharp, you know. It's, yeah. Um, we didn't really have an identity as a brand before, and uh, I think that uh, they did a You good just job. had to know our beer was good. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> yeah. everybody knew Green Flash, and, and like the old logo, you know, was, uh, you know, this this half flash, and nobody knew, right. what, first of all, what a Green Flash was, and second of all, they're like, is that a pot leaf? I'm like, no, but. No. Sure. But, uh, right. Whatever makes, whatever makes you, you feel cool it. about yeah. drinking yeah. our yeah. beer. <laughs> but then, so we had to explain what a green flash was and, and now we've got a little toast on here that talks about what it is and the logo looks a little bit better you can understand that it's a you know certain phenomenon when the sun sets in the west coast and all that <laughs> stuff uh but yeah so i think it'll be good and i, I think that branding and cans just in general in texas right. is kind of state yeah that you gotta have cans and so um it'll be good we got a good core portfolio we got a we got a new england ipa and, um, okay oh, good for you guys yeah, yeah. Well, you're, the other coast look at that somehow you're you're growing up and uh yeah. and <laughs> Getting more immature at the same time. Yeah, it's one of those oh, take dude. two steps forward, one step back. Right. I mean, look, it was a good beer. What's cool about what we do with ours, though, it's it's it, we had a, a certain yeast, a Brettois yeast, that actually cre- oh, creates oh, yeah. the haziness. So, um, but yeah, we we changed that up, and we we still got our blonde ale, we still got our two IPAs, and Alpine's like all IPA focused because that's what they do best. And you know, if uh, anybody your listeners or, or watchers know who Russian River is, Alpine's got the reputation of Russian River in Southern California. They were uh, actually an article came out on uh, Beer Advocate. Um, they were the second mm. highest ranked beer ahead of Lone Pine Yellow Rose, mm. um, and only behind uh, Todd the Axeman from Surly, which you can't get in Texas. So Alpine had five in the top 100. Nice. Um, so they make high quality beer, a little higher end um, price wise, but we reduce pricing too. So yeah, you nice. know, we're going to try to be competitive. But yeah, we make good beer. So if you like beer, by, check by the way, beer. if you're wondering what New England IPA is, it's the Mumble Wrap of beer. It's it's what's hot right ah, now. Yeah, that's what's hot right now. Hey, I like nice. that. Nice. <laughs> I, I, beer. Would have I never heard put that, that together. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Big that. You need to make a shirt right now. There we go. Holy <laughs> shit. Uh, real quick, Doc, I wanted to know, what one, what it was like collaborating with Rosewood Thieves. I love the music they put together. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, How'd that come about? You know, my, my wife uh, used to work at the mayor's office, and uh, James... Uh, interned with her okay. so that's that's how that was the first connection was that that they worked together and right I got like a mixtape from him and uh and and they had one of the, and it had freedom on there um and i think i think melissa was the first one to work with them my, my wife sings and um she she sang the hook on one of their songs and and then uh you know when they they did their i i, I started going to their shows and just becoming friends with with all of them right. and and then uh, December, they called me, and I went and played for their their uh, Christmas album. And um, just recently, uh, actually, they I, I, I was thinking that I, I was in the studio with them, but I, I was there because they were giving me something. They made a little Doc Love promo, promo nice. because I, I had done a Kickstarter, um, an unsuccessful Kickstarter. And uh, yeah, it's cool. I got raised 5000 out of eight, but I got nothing. Nice. Hey. <laughs> I got nothing, so... But they don't get oh, yeah, if you don't hit the not mark, with Kickstarter, and it. I'm still oh, trying really? to yeah, and I'm still trying to like educate my friends on Facebook that uh, I got nothing out of that because I'm doing an Indiegogo now, and they're like, uh, we gave you money, didn't we? Right? Yeah, it's like no, you didn't get charged, and if yeah. you didn't give me money, you should give anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, that's a good segue here. You have the Indiegogo up right now, and that's for the show on St. Patrick's Day, correct? Right, shows and shirts. Um, and uh, and and then VIP uh, or or uh, music lessons lesson. with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you've done really well, by the way. Thank uh, you. I don't know. How, yeah. Anyhow, so um, yeah, if you go on Indiegogo and search Doc Loke and the Swangers, um, it's actually cheaper uh, to do it that way. Right. But uh, the tickets are up on Eventbrite. Uh, it's just on on it on uh, the Indiegogo. I I eat the cost of of the processing stuff. Right. And then on 
Eventbrite, you pay it, so it's it's just a little bit, you know. Right. I, I'm I'm happy if people go on either one or show right. up the day of, but it'd be real cool to know that I can pay the musicians before the show starts. Exactly. Yeah. And so, that way, I'm not you know, keep looking at the front door, hoping yeah. people just keep walking in. That's stressful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was that ever a problem with y'all's band packing out the place? <laughs> no, man, we, just, just, we just always did. We never charged cover when we did it, though. Right, we just, um, they're like, like, hey, you want to pitch the killed it every time we yeah, showed up. So. People do with this. Right. Yeah, but, but keep in mind, we never went past that bar in Waco. Right, right, so, right. like, we didn't really, we <laughs> owned that spot. That was y'all's MSG. Yeah. Yeah. No, no yeah. tour. Yeah, no, <laughs> regional we, tour. No tour. We were hoping for a VH1 behind the music, but it didn't yeah. ever happen. Yeah, so. <laughs> they never got yeah. in touch with us. Yeah, they didn't call Damn us. Bastards. Yeah. <laughs> what do you hope to, to do after this? You know, do you, do you hope to, to continue to collaborate with, with more musicians like Rosewood Thieves or, or artists like Paul Wall and stuff like that? Or do um, you want to continue Dog Loke and Swing or see what y'all can do after I, this? I'd love to do more shows. Um, uh, talk to ESG. Um, he's he's interested. I Now I think I'm... You know, I, I'm not like real <laughs> tight friends with him, so yeah. I can't just like say, "Hey, you rap for free on my track." Yeah, like, <laughs> you have licensing; you'll get paid more than I will, anyways. Right. But, but you know, it didn't didn't work that way. You know, those guys are those really good business persons, and yeah. you know, have managers, and 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 uh, uh, so I, I just I'd like to do more collaborations with the original rappers, right? Um, for sure, and I, you know, I think that'll take some people that. You know, that, that just have some bread and, and believe in the um, believe in the project, and, and I've already had some of that. That's good. Yeah, you know, so I just want to keep I want to keep doing it. That's good, dear. There, there's a lot of young, hungry artists out there too. Like they're yeah. in in Houston, they're talented. That yeah, it, it would be. Um, it, I mean, obviously they're not ESG, and so the, it'd be a little easier to get in touch with them about maybe working together right. almost in a rose with these right. style and so but i understand what, you, what you're going for is to get the classics well i, I mean that, for that's the moment. part of this this but i i don't i when i went into it i, I didn't know what the result's going to be right. i don't yeah, know right. who's going to like it i don't know what it's going to do to my career i know it's going to and it's definitely changing me and opening to a different audience so i'm i'm absolutely willing and uh you know i'd love to work with new artists in the mm-hmm. studio and and maybe take something that's kind of stale but if they're but if if they have like a story and and something that i that i that i, I you're drawn I like to. yeah that's yeah. something i'm drawn yeah. to i'll be like hey let, how about i write three horns on this and you know let's use let's right. use real drums and bass and you know if somebody's got like a little budget and trying to make it you know make right. it right for everybody then mm-hmm. I'm, I'd, I'd love to make some new stuff too. Yeah. But, you know, I'm not just stuck in the past. Of course. I, got I mean, you. I'm kind of stuck in the past. <laughs> We're all a little <laughs> stuck in the past. I'm, it, I'm pretty sure most of our business model is being <laughs> stuck in the past and celebrating it. So. That's right. That's right. But it's, it's, it it's such a past. Like, you have to celebrate it. Yeah. You know? Right. But, I mean, hell, if, if we don't celebrate it and we have all these people fighting <laughs> off of it, you know, we're not proud of our own stuff. You know, it just this is just not a good look. There, it is being what what Houston and not what we've done. I'm not a musician, but what Houston has done is being recognized all over the country. Yeah, people right. are incorporating what we've done into their sound, into their swagger, etc. And outside of the country, right? Yeah. And so, we need to we need hometown. We need to celebrate our. We need to What's know cool it's Paul worth Wall celebrating. Did, like throwing about like giving you a shout out and like showing like hey this is legit like this is cool yeah, yeah. Right? and that helps the cool factor for everybody that want to you know just say hey that's a good idea like that's something different right, you know everybody right. needs to separate themselves because we kind of talked about it earlier like, and you're doing cool. it you're doing it the Local. right way because it, it wasn't like you just put you know the paw wall vocals over y'all's yeah. instruments you know um, yeah, that's a good way to get sued right, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. i'm saying and you did so much hard work to get to that point right well, why I, cheat it at that point yeah. right and I love that he updated it too. Yeah, he, he, yeah. Made, he updated it, and so did uh, Big Pokey. Right. Yeah. The uh, beginning of Big Pokey's verse sounds almost like a freestyle, and then it starts. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and then it starts to get. You're like, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm recognizing all these words again. But yeah, that's what I mean. It was like hearing it for the first time because then because there were parts that were changed, so then it's deciphering yeah. those those points that were changed. That one so, I definitely did. Uh, did did some some di- did some yeah. stuff. <laughs> I got you. And I, the ending. I mean, I love that they rapped on it, but the ending, like musically, I I, I like what I wrote. <laughs> you're you're <laughs> supposed <laughs> to like what you do. It's yeah. a, it's a good big band. Like it's it's definitely big band. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like just a real you know flag waving, screaming trumpet, screaming trombone mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. I feel like agreed. Agreed. What's the response to like you know wanting to keep it clean 
and the massage and you know you know no kind of like do I mean I mean because I know like some of that stuff part of the image and the people aren't really that way but like are they cool like they're like no this is, it's got to be this way or they're like no I'm cool with changing it no I I didn't uh, you know I, I, honestly I I wasn't there when Paul Wall did it you know he did yeah. it remotely um, yeah the the one thing that he says I think is still in the it's in the version you know uh, hose dissed me in the club same hose in the parking lot bopping right yeah that's still that that's you know, I, I, when I went to play for my college class, I was like, "Wait, this is I'm playing for seventeen women." Yeah, and I'm like, uh, "That was maybe not cool." So, uh, but I didn't I didn't ask him to change it. Now, Pokey, I did take off the we we adjusted the the f word, right. you know, just so we wouldn't have to have the the e. You're yeah. right. Um. So I, I'm not. I don't know that I'm answering your question actually. But, but you <laughs> no, know, if 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 ESG went into the studio yeah. and wanted to lay it down, which which the rhythm that I use mm-hmm. was, uh, you know, I think it was the clean version because that just happened to be the one that I had. Right. Yeah. But uh, you know, if he wanted to lay it down, I think that's something that I would maybe have a conversation or, or release both. Yeah. Right. I just, yeah. I, I, it's just, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know that that's what a good problem to have. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So yeah. you know, I'm already in the I room mean, with ESG now. Right. To, right. To Cause they, how. you know, they, they release clean versions. They, yeah, they, they know what, they know yeah. what it is. They know um, the business. And, yeah. uh, you know, and, 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 but getting into a whole different world though, the, the one thing that I would want it, uh, now that I'm thinking about it more, I would want it clean because I'm like, I'm a white boy yeah. doing black music and do I want the N-word on the record? I don't. Yeah. I'm not, and it's, you know, Paul Wall never uses it. Eminem yeah. never uses it. Yeah. You know, so it's, it, to me, it's kind of, kind of weird. You know, if, if I'm not on the track rapping yeah. and he's using it and we're like together, it it's, it, it's, 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 you. you know. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there's a tie still. So you, you, it doesn't make you comfortable to allow yeah. it. Or, yeah. I, I think is how it's, I'm it's, reading it. It's such a tricky thing, you know, like in my neighborhood, I live in a black neighborhood and I, I jam, you know, I bang screw all the time. Right. And then sometimes, you know, depending on my mood, uh, my windows will be all the way down and my <laughs> subwoofer will be all the way up. And then I think of like, okay, I need to do this. I need to dump this word because it's like, yeah. that's that's offensive. That's not my word. Right. right. I feel like, yeah. Yeah. So it's like that's that scene in office space. That's a... That's a yeah, that's. I, I think that's a long, yeah. d- deep conversation. Oh, but yeah. that's just what I was asking because I mean, sometimes people just to get the moment they want to say what they want to say. And, you yeah. know, sometimes people may take that. Hey, this word has to be there, or this uh, quote has to be there because it changes the whole song. So it's kind of interesting because I know you want to keep it as clean. I'm just curious, like if I mean to this point, obviously no, but if, what what if there's any pushback if any ever to that? Because yeah. like that's a it's interesting thing because people don't want to artistically change things necessarily right. all the yeah. time. You know. Well, yeah, I think and and but. You know the other side of it. I think if I pay him, yeah, yeah if I give him if I you know whatever it takes. I don't know what it I takes, don't think but problem. I think it'd be like you know yeah. you got your bread and it's gonna be a radio edit because yeah. yeah. I want to hear this on the box and ninety point nine KTSU and right. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to yeah. listen to my own music on the way on yeah. the radio. On the radio, yeah. yeah. And like you said, they do most of them. Like especially more in the past, it doesn't happen as often now, uh, with hip hop artists specifically is who I'm thinking of is they'll release the edited versions as well. Right. And like we had um the um the artist from last week, Tim Woods, he had gone on tour with uh Tobe and Wigwe, who's a really big blowing up Houston rapper right now. Straight edge, clean, everything. Doesn't curse. And, and it's like a it, it's his principles. He it's not like yeah. he doesn't preach it or anything. It, yeah. it, there's a little message to it, but it's also like he it's more of an understanding that he has for the business in cleanliness. Right. Yeah. And it's also the, his, the way he likes to carry himself. And so it's benefited him to go an entire rap career. Right. Without bitches, hoes. Right. Yeah. And yeah, like, yeah. saying things. Drugs that, yeah. cool, though. I mean, because, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. part of the culture a little bit. And right. that's kind of cool to show that, hey, we can do it. And yeah. it's not cheesy. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, like, right. you think, I, think, I think cheesy rap and I think DC talk and things like that where it's, like, forced... You yeah. know, and things like that, and like bad eighties, nineties yeah. Christian, like Christian rap. Yeah, it's, it's in, the <laughs> it's the line that Chance the Rapper is currently walking. Um, Ch- I love Chance the Rapper, but I definitely there's some blowback he's been getting, re- like because he has a holier than thou every now and again uh, uh, attitude about it, and yeah, he's walking a thin line of like, I is everyone in the room part of the Chance the Rapper fan club? 
No, I'm just trying to hear what you're saying. Oh, okay. Sorry. Gary's never no, had a cool room when people I listen to him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No one blew back at it. I was like, all right. All right. Sorry. <laughs> no, I, there's a lot of music that I don't... Yeah, I, I recognize him. I've seen all these goofy commercials and yeah. stuff. <laughs> but, I, I, you know... Um, if, if you played his stuff, I wouldn't recognize it. Right. Yeah, I, I couldn't say, oh, that's that's that. Yeah, I don't know. If you played NWA, I'd say that. Okay, that's <laughs> that's that's MC Ren. You know, that's yeah, yeah. that's you know. That's yeah, see, I don't know different. enough of his stuff. Like, the, I mean, I know who he is. I've heard a couple songs, but it's not like Meek Mill or anything well, like that. For I, me, I think ex- like, oh, I know who that is. Especially with Chance the Rapper. Chance the Rapper didn't give he, Robert Kraft a one chance. of his first or the, the album good. that blew him up was was about acid. Yeah, you know, yeah. So for, to go from that to your next record being. You know how how great is God? Literally, is <laughs> there's a song yeah. on there, and it's a great and beautiful song, right? <laughs> with a yeah. really well. That is strange. It's a great J Electronica verse on there too. Yeah, that's yeah. his Beatles transition, right? Basically, you know, he went to the, the Sergeant Pepper's. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, and because you could tell it was always there with Chance the Rapper. I guess we're gonna dive into this a little bit. Sorry. Uh, it was always there with him, like career, like I don't know, content wise. But right. like, yeah, the Acid Rap album, it was a lot of fun, or like, it was a lot of explosive sounding. Yeah. And it's where you got some of, like, his catchphrases and stuff that, are, like, more wide audiences would know him for. And then he really started to be, like, a prevalent name in the hip-hop scene whenever he got on um, the the Kanye song, uh, yeah. Ultra Light Beam. Yep. And most of it was more on the uh, Christian life, or I, not necessarily that, but just, yeah, a much more wokeness to the, the verse that definitely delved into his Christian background. But you, like, what do you say to like Snoop Dogg? And did then he a kind of tripled album. down on it. God, Snoop yeah. Dogg did a gospel album. He and he, I but, mean, it's Snoop Dogg's different, I guess. Snoop yeah, Dogg is they, capitalism and body. Yeah, fair enough. I'm just saying, Snoop kinda, Dogg is in that 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 what that 46 to to 50 range where he he can do a reggae album, he can yeah, do the Lions, Christian Snoop album, Lions. and all that stuff. He, he's kind of like to me. He, he's he, a he can do whatever he, he wants. He comes off to me as old or T Pain. Yeah, okay. T Pain has built himself in this culture around the internet and stuff like that, and yeah. what's trending, and he he loves it. He's still young, yeah. But Snoop Dogg is like he he was before the internet, yeah. And then he was thrown into this, and now he's just like a, a cultural thing. He's a yeah. cultural icon. He's not really Snoop Lion anymore, he's, or Snoop Dogg anymore. He's Snoop Dogg the. I can't believe I just call him Snoop Lion. That's that fucking Clamato. But he's Snoop Dogg the brand now. He's not Snoop yeah. Dogg the rapper yeah, Snoop anymore. Snoop Dogg's a business. Yeah, yeah. No, I, mean, I mean, good for him. Snoop Dogg yeah. the meme. I guess uh, it's the meme, yeah. yeah. Hanging out with Martha Stewart yeah. and all that. Yeah, yeah. right. And, he, and it, it, his, to everything Carlos just said, it's kind of why you can see Snoop Dogg on the Martha Stewart show because there's these jokes that can be made about it. But then it's also, yeah. there's a bunch of money to be made in it. Sure. Right. And well, then he would be Snoop Lion. <laughs> there's the jokes to be made about yeah. it. There's the money to be made from it. And I honestly haven't heard the album that he did as Snoop Lion. I bet there's two or three good songs on there. Sure. Then didn't he do that album with Pharrell uh, a few years ago, Bush? Uh, yeah, he did do that one. And, yeah. yeah. And so, not a Pharrell fan? Not at all. Okay. <laughs> no. I have to ask why, but, and I respect. <laughs> the, that you're able to not like him, not gonna try to make you a converter or convert. Sounds like it sounds like you're, you're struggling. We're about to have back. a debate off. He's gonna turn you into Pharrell fan. After that this. no, because he knows way more about music than I do. <laughs> so all I could, my argument would be like, I like the way it sounds, dude. He has a pretty voice. <laughs> okay, I give you that. It's not nothing with him as I a, didn't expect that as a as a pretty voice having person. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but he doesn't know the history unless he has learned what the blues are since you know I, I don't know if y'all have ever seen that uh interview with him when they're uh suing uh, um, the blurred lines sorry, yeah, the blurred, yeah blurred yeah. lines and, and, and they're asking him about genres and and he just is completely he he knows nothing yeah he's just, he's an he was an illiterate i don't know where he's at now and he's doing really great and i'm a part-time hater I have we really are. strong nice. musical opinions. Yeah. Um, I would imagine you do. <laughs> yeah. and it's hard for me to listen to music and not analyze it. Yeah. Like this sure. is this is wrong. This is this is this could be better. This is mixed poorly, you know, this should have more bass, this should be louder. I feel like all artists do that though. I mean, even sports guy. I mean, I mean, I, I look. I played I was in college. Say you're a beer and I never, you know, played to the higher levels. It's probably that, but I sit there and, and I look at the game from an aspect of like, okay, well, they missed this block here. Why are they running this scheme or whatever? All right. Yeah. And I don't know any more than Bill Belichick, of course, but I do the same thing. But the same thing with <laughs> very high pedestal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know more than Bill Belichick. Bill, Bill, Bill Belichick. Bill O'Brien. <laughs> 
I probably know a little more than Bill O'Brien. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Just kidding. Adam Gates. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh man, that's a great meme. Like, falling around the tacos. Anyways, um, yeah, like, but beer's the same thing. Like, and I, I can be very opinionated, but, right. but it, it's kind of it's my opinion. Mm-hmm. So. Right. What I feel about any local brewery or any regional brewery is my opinion. Right. Every palate's different, but I do critique it, and I think it's the same thing with any artist that, that well, you do movies, you sports, whatever. You're right. sitting there, you're like, why do they do this? You know, and I hear it a lot of times in a lot of interviews that I listen to musicians, and they're just like, you know, well, I don't respect this guy because he did it this way, but I. Right. And it's, so it's it's not abnormal at all. It's kind of cool because right. it's I always love to hear different. If, if you know what it takes, or if you know you know you you know the yeah. ins and outs. Then you're you you don't have that you don't have like the the normie ear anymore. Right. You know you have right. you have the dissected you have a trained ear. ear. Yeah. yeah, it's a blessing and a curse. Right. Oh, yeah. So with my haterisms, I I try and I work to keep it inside. That's the thing. If I can think anything I want to, yeah, sure. But do I say it? You know, I think of the the saying: Does it need to be said by me? Does it need to be said by me now? Um, that's I'm I, I'm I fucked that up. <laughs> Does it start with? Does, Does it, it need, need to be, be said? Yeah. Does okay. it need to be said by me? Does it need to be said by me? What, yeah, so what's right. an artist that you, that you you hated and then like you had no choice? It kind of grew on you. Joey Alexander. <laughs> okay, I'm about to check him out. Yeah, he's a, he's a phenom. He's 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 a, I think he's 14 now. When he oh, wow. when he oh. came out, he was 10. You hated a Plain. ten-year-old. Yeah, watch. I'm check, laughing. Check. Like... Joey Alexander, Giant Steps. Giant okay. Steps is one of the like jazz test pieces written oh, by man, John this, Coltrane. This is a little guy. John, John Coltrane, and yeah, and I, I couldn't listen to his music for years, just because he's ten and plays better than I ever will. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's not like one of those. Oh, I'm beating myself down. It's like <laughs> I'll never play as good yeah. as he does when he was ten. That's right. crazy. How much do you think went behind that? Because I mean, I know. It's kind of that thing where they teach kids Spanish young because your mind or your brain is almost like a sponge. More malleable. Yeah. And yeah. so you can do that with several objects. But how much, like, how much hand slapping with rulers do you think that also takes? I, I think you have the chops, though. Part of it's you got to have the ability. Like, I don't have a musical ear. I can't, you right. know, like, you obviously do. But. I was, I, I think I, I had an extra, you know, and I, I'm not a prodigy, but I had extra extra help you know but yeah. some of that's growing up with with the mom this piano you yeah. know singing all the time and stuff like that mm-hmm. but he he you know yeah i'm pointing to the computer he's in there <laughs> he's that. in there, he's in there. I pulled him up. not yeah. nipsey hustle <laughs> right right so you know he's 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 definitely a prodigy so that's a different level of yeah. thing. just putting him in front of piano you know i teach piano lessons you know that's probably my main income right now is, is teaching private lessons and right. you know i teach a five-year-old and this kid doesn't practice, you know. Yeah. He's 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 five. He doesn't have to. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of other things going on that a five year old would figures. sandboxes, yeah. action figures, right. jump to. So, right, but this this kid, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know. If there's videos of him when he was five, but I think it's a completely different thing than than, than my five year old student and him. It it's just something that he was born to do. Yeah, right. I agree with that because I mean, you see these kids that can drum or play guitars at you know five six years old that like no matter how many years I could practice and like really yeah. dig into it, like dedicate myself to it, I would never be that good at it. Right. And they're just like, yeah, I could do it. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. no it, big deal. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> but I mean, the same thing with athletes, you know, I mean, you can, you can take a person that, uh, that's athletically built, that's tall. I mean, I wasn't very good at basketball. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't have the, the skills of But playing. I could rebound. But I could rebound, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was good on the boards. Yeah. Stick but my like, hands to be in a pro athlete, you know, you got to have that skill, like dedication. Right. And there's there's practice players and there's players who just have God gifted talent. And yeah. Those okay. people are the ones you see in the big, in the big show, you know? Right. Crossover talent. Really, yeah. Because, like, you have guys. Uh, I'm going to use MMA as an example mm-hmm. where you have football players, you know, guys that are athletically yeah. gifted that can go into MMA and, and have a decent career. Brock. Herschel Walker had a, had a good uh, career. Uh, Brock Lesnar. Well, he wasn't really a football player. He was a guy uh, that played football. He did. Uh, <laughs> Brock Lesnar is <laughs> but he was a D1 most, wrestler. The most hated yeah. that's, man that's in everything difference. he's ever done. He was a D1 wrestler. Um, <sighs> you know, now you got Greg Hardy. He's yeah. doing his thing. He actually just had his fight. Oh, he got he, a lot of practice. He, he, he was, now, yeah, so. he, he was True. disqualified for an illegal blow. Uh, was he? Yeah, no, that's right. I knew he was starting. Yeah, through, like, yeah. A, through, his, his debut uh, UFC fight. Like, guy was down, right? But yeah, so so having those like those people, that's just that's just crossover talent. Yeah. you know, like, like they can go and do that type of stuff. I don't know as much of like, I don't know if there is such a thing as crossover talent in music. Is there or like 
I'm so good at this. I can I can train myself to do that. Like, I feel like people who play multiple instruments are. Yeah, you know, but yeah, that's a good. That's a good. But point. can they like? Can you play them to the like? Can those people play them to the same standard that they play? I don't know. Their, Paul their... McCartney always. I mean, he comes to mind for me as a songwriter. But he was, right. he knows how to play piano, bass, guitar, right. and like he was talking telling stories about playing the Beatles. Like he and he was he leads a band now. He's right. pretty he's pretty skilled. I would say that yeah. the guy might be able to. But I mean, to your point, maybe not. But I think playing multiple instruments is that crossover because it's hard enough playing one instrument. Right. I mean, <laughs> trombone and then piano and then like all that. Like that's yeah. My brain just doesn't work that way. Right. It's too yeah. difficult. Well, I got to college and I, I started playing trombone on gigs and I saw how other trombone players, how they live. And it's like, they, they, there aren't a lot of gigs for trombone players. Mm-hmm. Right. Let's be and honest, it's always for the women though, right? Uh, yeah, trombone just, players and women. Yeah. yeah dude, you're strong arm. <laughs> they, the girls love the trombone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They they flock that, you can play the piano and sing. And sing, right. Yeah, and that's yeah, a big hard. difference between just playing piano because yeah. there's more gigs for, for singing piano players. Sure. Right. There's even more gigs for singing piano players that can do Billy Joel yeah. and Elton John, right. but I'm not there because I'm, a, you know, again going back to being a hater and jazz, don't go work at Pete's yeah. or, jazz yeah. intelligentsia or some. I'm just yeah. Is there an instrument that you would love to learn how to play? Oh, well, I I, I like if see I, I'm like seeing the whole orchestra right now. Yeah, <laughs> that's tough. Um, you know, guitar is something that I I. I studied for a little bit, um, you know, self-taught. That's actually when I was on the uh, Luther unit um, in the, on the trustee camp, and you could check out the guitar from the, you know, from the front, and I would take it off to the, like, outside. Right. And, and just work on guitar. Just having a prison memory there. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, I was just going... Letting, letting you uh, just follow that, that yeah, path. Yeah, I'm homesick, you know. I got you. <laughs> that I'm, I'm just, I just I love listening to people who are musically talented talk about like the feeling of me like or right. just learning it and everything because it never clicked for me <laughs> to Garrett yeah. and I that sounds good yeah yeah <laughs> but to you you know you know why it sounds good or why it sounds it. bad yeah. or yeah it's what, like what's that. wrong yeah. what, what note you missed that's right. why my haterisms come from just, I don't know if I'm just yeah I don't know if I'm a part time hater as much as it's just beautiful locks <laughs> it's in me yeah but no um. My, like, what I've had to train myself to do now is say, that wasn't for me. Because, yeah, oh, yeah, like, that's there's, a, nice way to put there's it. a lot of bad shit out there. But, like, most of it, I, I've i had to take a step back and go, millions of people like it. That's right. 100% the analogy to use for craft beer. Because yep. what I've always taught people, and I have to catch myself sometimes, too, is that I can't say a beer is terrible. I, like, I was talking about it, people were like, that's the worst beer I've ever had. I'm like, okay, well, it's not for you. But there's somebody who loves this beer who will really like this beer. That you know, there are breweries out here making bad beer, in my opinion. But that's yeah. maybe somebody likes it. So right. Right. you know, there's fundamental things you can do wrong in beer, just like there is in music. Yeah. But it's it's my opinion. But you got to learn to say it's not for me. It's right. not my style. You know, and, and and not you know crap on somebody or shit on somebody's mm. taste. You know, because yeah. that's just kind of kind of rude. You know? yeah. <laughs> that and then you also set it up in your mind now, like you shut the door. That beer sucks. Yeah, right. it right. could get better and. Uh, hopefully sooner than later but fuck it say you have the beer um, a free beer is always a free beer sure is the rule and so say you have that same beer you (laughs) hated four years ago yeah four years later and you're like for some circumstances maybe like I like this beer more now yeah whatever it is so like it might be the music what's that there you go say it could be the music yeah Palettes change. You man. think so? Yeah, certain bars play shitty music. <laughs> yes, Sorry. they do. Sorry, certain bars play a uh, lot of music that's not, not for me. me. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. Education. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm, I'm that, gonna use that. That's been my like. That's been my that growing my moment in the last lesson. like three Little years. Pump is not for me. Yeah, like, it's <laughs> yeah. not for me. But but like, also, if you can critique it though, if you see that somebody's doing something wrong, I mean, obviously, yeah, it's not for me. But because I don't like that this person does that, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. or how they did this. Because like that's that's one thing I can't do. Like I can say something's not for me, but I right. have no reason why somebody had a bad life of horns and somebody's like, dude, that's terrible. Like they're not really good at this instrument, or they're not really good at yeah. this. Cause, it, you can cover up a lot with a live performance if, if you're decent enough, I think. I, know, I feel like there's here. there's less room for, for error or for being bad in music because yeah. you can tell when something is fundamentally, you know, not right. Yeah. Whereas sure. in beer, it you know, it, it... You can hide a lot, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. That's <laughs> why there's gas stations doing... all over the place with peanut butter cups oh. for sale. Uh, <laughs> there's why a lot of people are doing milkshake IPAs and, you know, those New England IPAs because it's, you know, easy. You made the right face. 
Yeah, because it's easier to... I, rem- I remember enough about beer to, that that sounds like a bad idea. Well, that's why it's funny that everybody was up in arms about this Bud Light commercial about corn syrup, and it's like somewhere somebody's at, you know throwing a pack of Hostess donuts into their boil to, to yeah. make their next pastry stout. Like, it's like, you guys drink adjuncts too? Like, don't. Calm down. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so pretty much... What's going or what's going on in beer in the last like two three years? I mean, it's yeah. been going on, but like it's gotten popularized the last two years, last yeah. two three years is um, taking what some used to consider like aggressive styles and sugar fine trying to t- tame it down with sugar, fruiting oh. them up, adding lactose sugar, um, and yeah, adding whatever yeah, and it's it's created some very good beers sure. out of the process. Yeah, absolutely. It has also created some of the worst events. <laughs> Uh, some of the most mediocre beer that was not for me. Over I mean, just think of an IPA that's you know it's supposed to be bitter, and then you're throwing lactose in it, and you're, right. you call it a milkshake IPA, and it's just you know blueberry something IPA. It just throws you off. It just doesn't sound appealing. We actually inadvertently did a lactose uh, IPA several years ago because long story short, we wanted the rights to a name called Road Warrior, a beer that uh, was already produced by Terrapin in Atlanta. So we contacted them and said, hey, look, we'll buy the rice. They said, no, let's do a collaboration. So we did one. We called it Tangerine Dreamsicle. It was a tangerine IPA with lactose, non-fermenting uh, milk lactose sugars in the end. So it was meant to taste like that Tangerine Dreamsicle, right. uh, mm-hmm. Orange Dreamsicle cream pop. And it actually did. But we were that was three years ago before all this became a thing. And now yeah. like you got people who are building breweries based on <laughs> milkshake <laughs> IPAs and yeah. pastry stouts. Yeah. And you know, whatever, to each your own. Like I said, it's not, it's for, not me. for me. Not for me. That's a lesson <laughs> today, kids. Not for me. There we Pretty go. much the end of the game, or the end of the statement there is uh, Josh Samples is not that active on Instagram. So <laughs> Yeah, don't follow me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Twitter is for the, uh, the cynical, and Instagram is for the, um, the dreamers. And a personal Twitter. For yeah. Separate the two. Well, now that uh, your business is tagged in this episode, what I want, <laughs> <laughs> what I wanted to do yeah. was publicly run you up about the fact that you told me Tangerine Soul Style would not be returning. <sighs> yeah, that's been gone for like a year. Yeah, I know it's been gone. Um, but Yeah, it's not. What, first of all, what the fuck? <laughs> Why the fuck? And third of all, who the fuck do y'all... I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, uh, you were like the... That like, one was for him. That was... Yes, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's not easy. I say this every time I get it. Like, we used to be, do a beer that was double stout. People were like, oh, man, I love that beer. I'm like, oh, you're the guy. You're the one that bought that beer. Like, yeah. it's, uh, it was, way to speak up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. thanks. It was less than 5% of what the brewery sold. At, at the end of the day, you know, it was in that, that phase where everybody was doing fruited IPAs. And it was a good beer. Don't get me wrong. I used to make a uh, Bromosa with it. Oh, So Bromosa. you just a little champagne. Pain and tangerine IPA, boom. It was, it was yeah, good. Dude. It was good. But, oh, yeah. uh, you know, at the end of the day, it just wasn't, we wanted to move away from that and get back kind of more to our roots now. And, and we did this over a year ago. It just, it didn't sell well. Yeah. No, it was a good beer. And people, people who loved it, loved it. It's a love or hate kind of thing. And I didn't have a problem with it. When it was fresh, it was the bomb. But, like, it just, yeah. not for everybody. It was like a guilty pleasure of mine because yeah, it, it was still a great IPA. Yeah. It also sounds yeah. like out of your flavor profile, really. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, it went well the, what we do is a soul style, which has got that tropical fruit note to it. So adding the tangerine uh, puree to it really yeah. stepped it up um, a notch. The only one we still do with fruit is the passion fruit, which is yeah. a, you know passion fruit wheat yeah. ale. So um, it was good beer. Like I just, it wasn't my favorite choice. I had to find ways to sell right. it because you know people loved it because it was in that phase where everybody's doing fruited beers. Right. But, had to find that's why I came up with the Bromosa. I'm like, dude, do Bromosas. And I did a San Diego beach party event and we had this uh surf rock band play out at Cottonwood a couple nice. years ago and we had Tangerine IPA. Um, and then we had like you know, beach bingo and all that stuff. stuff. Yeah, but it was cool, man. Like, it was a way to sell it, but yeah, I mean, sorry, man. Sorry, um, right. I, I could probably find some around town. I, I can't guarantee it's nah, fresh, yeah, that's but, what you told yeah. me, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll probably get you some. There you go, <laughs> you know. I appreciate the offer, All right. and you don't have to get it. It's still there. Just let me know. All right. Dog. <laughs> well, Soul Style will be back. Oh, sorry. No, yeah, but it will soul, be. Okay, yeah. The regular. Soul, soul Style will be back. Just the Soul Style. Dog, where can the people find, one, the Indiegogo, two, Dog Loke and the Swingers, you know, all your music, all that good stuff. And everything. Okay. Oh, vital information. Where, where could the good people find all the vital information? All right. Uh, D-O-C, L-O-C, and the Swingers. Swingers like the Swingers. It's spelled out. And S- not w- just the, a- yeah. Right. A N D T H E S W A N G E R S. And that's a double meaning, right? The swingers that they put on their cars mm-hmm. and swing, swang. Right. 
from from big man right. um, doc Loke and the swingers dot com uh, I'd say Facebook is the best best way to to check uh, out what's going on uh, the just search doc Loke and the swingers that page that has a link to the uh, if if you if you join that you you can see the indieGogo or uh, the event pride event pride is on I keep saying pride event bright <laughs> event pride event event I, I we'll I, put I, all I, that in the I've description I've had none of this I've had none yeah, of only this red, <laughs> only yeah. Red Bull um, the pear yeah, Red Bull pear yeah it's lovely uh, <laughs> uh, a nice IPA or something good good <laughs> I'm, I'm trying I'm trying <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, and it's it's on YouTube, um, uh, Spotify, all the streaming platforms. It is on iTunes. If you know those, that one person out there that still buys music, if you're listening, um, it's on it's on iTunes and Google Play and all that. Just search Doc Look and the Swingers. And, and the full project will be out around <laughs> March seventeenth. Thank you. Yeah, March seventeenth uh, is is the release concert with with a sixteen piece band. Uh, just south of downtown at the Preston Theater on 2201 Preston, 77003. Dope, dope, dope. Real quick, can you name all 16 of those people? Or, or you're no, one of them, so... No, okay, okay, here's, here's the trombone section. Andre, Andre Hayward, um, dang. <laughs> Jordan, let me, let me just go with first names. There you go. Uh, uh, Jordan Stevens, uh, uh, Kendall Moore, um, Aaron H., his last name is really got a lot fair, of letters. Fair, fair, fair. Um, okay, uh, trumpet section. Sal, um, James, Jerry. Um, in the woodwind section, we got um, Corey. We have Tito. We have uh, uh, Brian. We have uh, Grace. We have our. That's she's our one uh, woman in the band. Um, Hey, I tried. Um, and, <laughs> and be like and, that. And, and uh, yeah, be like that sometimes. Um, that's 11. Ernesto. 12. Uh, that's 12. Um, myself. 13. <laughs> uh, Glenn Ackerman on bass. Uh, Dre Jackson on drums. And I'm, I'm leaving one person oh. out. Okay. Oh, oh, that's because it was Warren, uh, Warren Sneed is playing... Uh, alto and clarinet for us, but in the studio it okay. was Woody Witt. That's okay. why I was confused. There we there go. go. I could Russell. hardly name sixteen people. I personally yeah, know, so that's awesome. That's dumb skill. Because <laughs> you could have just made up names and been like, yeah, Jeff, <laughs> Jerry. And... Which there is no telling whether or not he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know Sal. Took a line you know, <laughs> <took a line laughs> you know Cookie. All the all those good people. <laughs> and, and, and Alpine Beard. All those. And all. Yeah, Dweezil. So exactly. yeah, uh, we're looking forward to the Alpine. Alpine's not really getting the rebrand, right? It's Green Flash. Or uh, the, the, yeah, no, I mean Alpine. it's going to stay the same logo, except that we're going to do cans, and the cans all that really changed. What? We uh, we that's what I'm attached. Because yeah, this was this this strip right here was all that you would have in the cans, but now it's going to be a full Art fledged and, color. Yeah. Nice. Um, so they're going to pop off the shelf, and so they so that's the only rebrand, and we'll be in the cardboard wraps. They're going to look good on nice. uh, yeah. the shelf, but yeah, Alpine will have finally like a little bit more inventory for okay. beers here plus some uh, rotational so like i said we're gonna start canning that stuff uh starting the next couple of days so we'll start canning you'll start seeing it trickling to texas by the end of the february first of march okay. draft will start showing up too cool uh i also wanted to, the green flash bottle the new look that you guys have yeah. gone for the cans will kind of mimic that cans will look exactly like this okay. it'll be a white can um and then the cardboard wrap too it'll be you know, three dimensional. You can see it in different places on the shelf, um, and all the, the all the new stuff has been released, so you can kind of see it. They're all different logos for different brands. Like Soul Style has a surfer because it's a surfing term. Uh, GFB has a dude doing skateboard, and Tropical nice. DNA has like the double helix and some uh, you know beach stuff. So they're all going to be kind of branded in their own specific way. So it'll be kind of cool, really unique. Cool. And for all of Green Flash and Alpines. Um, events and what yeah. have yous here and locally. If you want to know what goes on in Houston, Green Flash, Josh. At Twitter um, and then Green Flash Beer on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you know, all that stuff. Was, don't. I don't think we have a Snapchat anymore, but uh, we, we used too to. Too many dick pics. Yeah, we used to, but uh, yeah, that's where you go for yeah. all that. Yeah, for all the dick pics. And then Alpine, yeah, no, no, no. And Alpine <laughs> no, they were getting dick pics, they weren't the, sending them, they were getting them. Make sure you put Alpine Beer Company, though, because there is an Alpine brewery, and that okay. is actually okay. in Alpine, Texas, and <laughs> we're in Alpine, California, which is in San Diego, or up mm. north of San Diego, so I get asked that a lot, and I'm like, I don't think there's mountains in that part of Texas, <laughs> there are, I'm like, okay, you're right. 
Sure, sure, sure. You said it. But I mean, don't say if they take it if it if we if it says local to them and that means that we're gonna buy it. I'll be like, yeah, totally, we're local. (laughs) Yes, we are the Alpine you're thinking of. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) This is the Alpine you're looking for. Uh, Sorry, I've had to. For for all of our episodes, we are on Southside Collection uh, on what. Spotify, Spotify, iTunes, iTunes Stitcher, SoundCloud, Stitcher. SoundCloud uh, also live on Facebook or Twitter. No matter where you're watching this, you can go find it on any of those other streaming platforms. YouTube. YouTube, yeah. We're, we're getting everything on YouTube as well. You so. can also go and find everything at southsidecollection.com. All of our episodes uh, that we've previously done as well as all of our merch. Thank you for supporting, by the way, man. Nice enough to come in repping his Make America Trill Again hat. That's Pretty right. sure I know exactly when you got it, but we're going to talk about it off air because... Yeah, I have questions. I have questions. <laughs> SouthsideCollection.com. Josh from Green Flash. Doc Loke from Doc Loke and the Swangers. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank Carlos, you, thank you, you look fucking dumb without a hat. Yes. <laughs> it's a lot you the one that drove to my house? Yes. 